Welcome back. In this last video for insurance, we're going to go for long-term disability, long-term care, and life insurance. Let's get started. Long-term care insurance covers uh, expenses that, associate, that are associated with long-term health care conditions. So uh, this is very severe. Uh, so this is insurance not just for your regular health care, but rather uh, you are not able to care for yourself with your day-to-day -day activities. Um, Long-term care insurance is only available through a private insurance company, um, and they can cover care for nursing home. That's really the number one uh, place uh, in, in terms of the use for long-term care. Uh, some companies also allow for the policy that also covers assisted living or health care A at home, uh, but primary is for nursing home, and that is because nursing home care is extremely expensive. Um, and at-home care is even more expensive. They run into thousands of dollars per week. Uh, premium for long-term care is usually quite expensive. Uh, so to decide whether or not long-term care insurance is appropriate for you, uh, look into your family's health history and also consider your own financial situation. Um, this is, uh, so again, long-term care is an unfortunate situation, um, whether or not you need long-term care. Uh, in America, the, in addition to accident where people become, um, bedridden, uh, so basically you really can't even get out of bed on your own or require someone to help you with, um, everything from eating to personal care. That's when you need long-term care. The other main reason for long-term care is if you have memory issues like dementia, um, and that again, uh, memory care, uh, is, um, can be very expensive. So take that into account if your family history includes, um, a significant memory, um, problem, then you may want to take that into account. And also, if your financial situation is not significantly wealthy, for example, um, you might eventually need Medicaid, and that is a different um, consideration. So you to qualify for Medicaid, you have to use up all your personal wealth before you can qualify for Medicaid. Um, that is unfortunate, uh, but that's something, again, you want to take into account. If you have sufficient wealth that you want to protect, uh, then long-term care insurance may be appropriate for you. In this particular video, we're going to talk about some extreme events. So in addition to long-term care, another uh, extreme event is that you become disabled while you're working. So if you become disabled, you can, you can buy insurance to provide for income in the case that you become disabled. So the definition of disability is important depending on the policy. Um, some, the most liberal approach, meaning that the most generous definition is that you can no longer do your existing job. So if you get injured or your health condition deteriorate to the point you can no longer do your current job, then this disability insurance policy will provide coverage. Uh, on the other hand, uh, some policy says that uh, you, you will only provide disability income coverage if you cannot do any job. So obviously, that's a very different definition. So let's say, for example, you are a doctor and you are currently making $500,000. Uh, because of an accident, you can no longer perform your current job. Uh, but you are able to work as a... Uh, as, as a, uh, in a grocery store, for example, as a bagging clerk, um, your income has changed substantially. But under the first definition, um, you will be able to get the income loss uh, provided by the insurance. Under the second definition, it will not. So be careful when you purchase a policy on what is being covered and what is not being covered. Uh, there are different places that you can buy um, disability income insurance. Uh, you can buy a individual policy. Those tend to be very, very expensive. Uh, your employer may also provide disability insurance, and those, um, those varies and, again, depends on the amount of coverage. You, do, you can also uh, have insurance through Social Security if you become disabled. 
uh, there is um, income through Social Security. Uh, the amount that you can receive through Social Security de is determined by the amount that you contributed. Uh, and then finally, if you are injured on the job, you may qualify for workman's compensation. And so those are all different sources of disability income coverage. Uh, again, this is not to cover your medical costs and this is not to cover your health care, but this is to replace the income that you lost because of, of your inability to work. Here are some factors that you want to take into account when you are deciding whether or not you want to purchase disability income policy. Uh, the first is the waiting period. Uh, this means that uh, the time period before when you become disabled until you begin to be able to receive um, the income provided by the policy. So take that into account. Um, the waiting period. So let's say you become disabled on the job and oftentimes there is a six months waiting period. So for six months, you won't have any income because you're not working and you have to wait six months before the disability insurance kicks in to provide you with income. So you want to make sure that your emergency fund can cover the gap between the waiting period. Uh, and some companies also have sick leave. So your uh, so when you get disabled, you may take sick leave to begin with, and then you have to wait for the waiting period before your disability insurance kicks in. So make sure that you have emergency fund to cover that gap in time. The duration of benefit is how long disability income benefit will pay. So it's not necessary for the remainder. So a lot of times they do have a limit. It can be five years, it can be 10 years. Uh, the amount of benefit is oftentimes either a maximum dollar amount and a percentage of your income. So the maximum of the two. So it may be up to 80% of your income, but no more than X dollar amount. So is, again, do your financial planning based on that and take your emergency fund into account to make sure that you have enough time to change your lifestyle to adjust to the new income. Um, guarantee re renewability, as the name imply. Uh, so if you, uh, if you have a guarantee policy, then as long as you pay the premium, they cannot cancel during the annual renewal period. So pay attention to what is covered. Uh, some disability policy covers sickness, others only cover accident. So if you become sick and become disabled because of your sickness, the accident only policy would not provide the income. Disability income insurance is particularly important if you have dependents that rely on your income. Uh, it's also something to consider even if you're single and there's no one else to be able to take care of you if you become disabled. Next, let's talk, look into life insurance. Um, there are different types of life insurance and we'll go over uh, each one and their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the most common type of life insurance is called a term life insurance. Uh, Basically, this is an insurance policy that covers a specified period, and, and that's it. Uh, it is usually renewed every year, and the premium can change each year from year to year. Uh, term life insurance will typically have a much lower premium than other types of life insurance policy. For most individuals, term life insurance is the best option, is the most straightforward. You pay a premium in exchange for an insurance policy that covers, that pay out uh, benefits in the event of your death. So that's it. There's no other, uh, no other packages add on to a term life insurance. So you're paying for coverage for benefits in case of your death. So term life is the most straightforward and the easiest to understand and oftentimes the best option. But you may encounter other, other policies, so we want to go over those as well. Uh, the second most common is called a whole life insurance. Sometimes they are called permanent. So basically, a life, this is a policy that will continue to provide insurance as long as you pay premium. 
uh, and the insurance actually has a cash value. So unlike the term life, term life does not have cash value. So a whole life, once you pay up the premium uh, and you have cash value uh, beyond a certain point, you may not have to addition, pay additional premium and you still get coverage. Um, but the premium obviously is higher so that you're building up this excess uh, cash value. So basically, you are prepaying future coverage in a way, and those prepaid future coverage becomes cash value. Another type of insurance is called universal life. Universal life, again, it provides insurance coverage, and it also, the, pre the excessive premium uh, becomes savings. So again, you are prepaying, you're paying additional premium and use that as a savings plan. Uh, so the reason why whole life and universal life is a little bit more complicated because your, your premium serves multiple purposes. Uh, term life, you can separate the insurance from the financial planning in the sense that you can keep your savings plan and your investment plan separate from your life insurance. Uh, the last type of life insurance policy is called variable life insurance. Uh, again, this is an insurance that provide uh, a policy that provides life insurance, and your premium, in a, uh, instead of leaving the premium for the insurance company to use, you can choose your excessive premium to invest in. Um, various types of investments, including stocks and mutual funds. And those will generate return on your insurance policy. So once again, this is a complicated policy. It combines investment and insurance. So term life is the most straightforward, is a simple policy. Whole life and universal life and variable life, they are combining investment and life insurance policy. So it makes it uh, more complicated. While well, we say that term life is the appropriate for most individuals, you may also take a look at why you buy life insurance policy to begin with, and that may help you decide which policy is the best for you. Uh, so for most people, uh, we purchase life insurance policy because we want to provide um, support to dependents. So let's take an example. Let's say you have a mortgage and you have young children. You may want to purchase enough life insurance so that you can pay off all your debt, including your, your, your mortgage, and provide for living and education expenses for your children. So how do you expect, how do you estimate how much you need? Uh, here's a simple rule of thumb that works quite well. Uh, it's called a 7-7 seven, seven rule. So it's basically 7 years, 70%. So you take your annual gross income times 7 times 0.7. So basically what that will do is, so the 30% deduction is because you are no longer around, so it's less, one less person to support. Um, but then for seven years, so on average. If your children are really, really young, then you may want to expand that seven years to a longer time period. But seven years is typically sufficient for the family to transition to a new lifestyle. Another reason to purchase life insurance, which is much less, uh, is to help with fun funeral expenses. Um, in, this in this case, if you, um, if your net worth is high, there's really no need for that. Um, one last reason to purchase the life insurance is to pay charitable donations. So you can actually purchase a term life insurance and pay the premium and name a charitable organization as the beneficiary so that when you die, they will be able to receive the entire payout. So that's one way to, uh, again, um, increase your charitable donation through the use of a life insurance policy. So when you buy a life insurance policy, uh, what are some of the things that you need to provide? Uh, one is to make sure that you have the name of beneficiaries and contingency beneficiaries. So these are the people that will receive the payout. 
So make sure that you have more than just one. So this the first beneficiary is the primary, but in case something happened with that beneficiary, then you have contingent, meaning that that will be the other people that will receive the benefit. Uh, very important to make sure that you use their entire correct legal name because this is a legal document. Uh, a lot of times uh, there are uh, in something called incontestable costs. And what that means is the insurer cannot cancel your policy if you have been buying the policy with them for X number of years and you continue the renewal. So for example, uh, it may be harder for an older individual to buy an insurance policy, um, particularly if your goal is for a charitable donation. But as long as you keep renewing the policy, then they cannot cancel you. Uh, they also may have grace period, meaning that if you didn't pay on time, uh, they still cannot cancel your policy as long as you pay within a number of days. If you buy a policy other than a term life policy, it's, it's really important to have this non-forfeiture cost so that you don't give up or you don't lose all the accrued benefits. So that includes the, uh, the cash value. Um, this is not very common, uh, but just in case, if you happen to, uh, to put your age incorrectly, you can correct for that. Um, and again, this has to do with the whole life rather than term life, whether or not you can borrow money uh, against the policy. So these provisions, uh, most of them are for the more complicated or sophisticated whole life and universal life policy. Uh, for term life, it's a lot simpler. Uh, the last cost that is important is the suicide clause. Uh, for almost most life insurance policy, it has a suicide clause so that you won't receive any payout if the death, the cause of death is suicide. And this is um, to again, avoid an individual uh, to uh, do actions that are contrary to their own benefit. Um, and so you, you can obviously see why an insurance company don't want to pay out a life insurance policy if the cause of death is suicide. Assuming you want to have a, or it's important for you to have a life insurance policy, how do you choose a good company? Uh, first and foremost, choose a company that has a strong financial condition. So you can check the business rating for an insurance agency. Um, the reason for that is because um, life insurance policy is most likely you won't use it for a long time. So you want to buy, purchase a policy from a company that will be around for a long time. You can look up their rating from a ratings agency. Yes, we talked about investment earlier. So these are the same bond rating agencies. They also rate insurance companies. So they, again, a triple A rating will be the best, uh, double A, single A. So always go with a higher rating agency. Uh, they may be slightly more expensive, but at the same time, they are more likely to be around when you need it. Uh, you may be get a discount if you have multi-policy. So again, some insurance company sells uh, homeowners insurance, auto insurance company uh, insurance. They also sell life insurance. Again, who needs life insurance? If you have dependent that counts on you, a term life insurance is appropriate. If you don't have any dependent and if your death is not going to cause any financial hardship, then you may not need uh, life insurance at all. Uh, and you can also reduce your life insurance uh, premium by having a healthy lifestyle. In fact, they do give uh, non-smoker a discount. They give non-drinker a discount. So a healthy lifestyle will help with your, uh, not just your own health, but it will also help with your financial health. In your financial plan, first things first. You start with a budget and your net worth that you help you decide what kind of insurance and how much insurance do you need. Uh, to summarize, insurance can help reduce your uncertainty and also protect your assets and your worth. 
Uh, so auto and homeowners insurance protect your property. Health insurance help manage your health care costs. Again, remember that uh, health care debt, uh, medical debt is the number one cause for bankruptcy in America. And then your budget will help you decide on how much coverage you may need for disability income insurance or if you need any life insurance. Um, Again, to to reiterate, uh, term life insurance is usually the most cost effective. Uh, it's the cheapest, and it also will help separate your investment planning from your uh, invest uh, your insurance planning, so that um, you can make your own investment decision. This concludes our module on insurance, and I will see you in the next module.